This is a massive portable duck or goose pond for the croft. It cost me absolutely nothing. All I had to go and do is fetch it and do a little bit of work on it. This is how we made it. This is a heating oil tank. I think this is about 1100, 1300 litres. It's, you know, a decent sized tank. They're really expensive, new. They're, of course, made of plastic. That's got a massive ecological impact. These things end up in landfill all the time. People are trying to get rid of them, especially now a lot of people are going back to heating with solid fuels again because it's you know, well readily available uh, for some people. So people are phasing out things that are oil-based. So these turn up on the market really often. This was free. Um, we've got another one that this has actually got a crack in it. I'll show you that in a minute. We've got another one that we've picked up. We can use for a different purpose. That's about twice the size of this. And we had that one for free as well. But even when they're relatively decent condition, uh, they can go for, I don't know, £100 or so. You can get a pretty significant tank. They do have some issues. That's what we're working with here. But rather than just see this thing go to landfill, we're actually repurposing these. This one uh, had a leak. So the, the fellow who had it before, um, he replaced it with a newer one. And he reckoned he'd fixed the leak on it, but he lost his confidence in it. So he just swapped it out. And, you know, this was free for the taking. He actually filled it with some... Uh, some sort of sealant, I think it's, I um, uh, can't remember what sort, but it doesn't really matter. The way to seal a tank like this is on the inside. So you've got the, the pressure of the liquid inside pressing against the seal, you know, increasing its strength. When you've got it onto the outside, epoxy, it's an epoxy uh, sealant. When you've got it onto the outside here, it ages, there we go, it flakes off. It's going to leak again at some point. So, you know, he was right to get rid of it. But below that point there it's still still perfectly sealed now when we got this thing it actually had a load of oil in it it was really heavy we had 75 liters of this and this is heating oil above and down the bottom there you can see all the sludge that's in it so we've had to tap all of that out that took a while so obviously we don't want any more than necessary on the ground uh, you know a little bit of oil on the ground and healthy soil it's not a massive deal you know 75 liters because we've had three of these 75 litres of oil, that's a big deal. So we've got that tapped off. We're probably going to use it for some, you know, greenhouse heating and so on. The sludge at the bottom will probably mix with wood chips and we'll just burn it off just so it's safely disposed of. Uh, you know, it's a, everything's a compromise, um, but we've got a couple of options. Uh, that's that taken care of. So that in itself could be seen as an asset. That was free. So we've probably got a good 60, maybe 60 liters of good quality heating oil. I wouldn't put it through any sort of heater, it's still quite dirty and it's old because it's all the sludge from the bottom of the tank from years and years of use. But you know, it does have a use. So, uh, below this point, we actually have a valve in at that end at ground level, so that's really good. And then we've got um, the tank itself. Now, the uh, rain typical. Hang on, don't want my electrics to get wet. There we go. So, this central rib coming through here is where most of the strength is in this. These, of course, create strength going around the tank. But if I was to top this off, below this, it'd be fairly strong. Above it, it'd be fairly strong. If I want to keep both sides rigid, through the centre of this is the way to go. So rather than measure it out and all the rest of it, I'm just going to get a jigsaw. I'm going to line up one of the feet. So I'm going to let one side of the feet level with the lip there. So I haven't got to mark anything. I can just cut straight through and just follow that same line all the way around. So before it comes on raining too heavily, I'm going to give that a go. That's nice and clean. But what I've got I fetched out an old tarp so I can minimize the microplastics. Now some of it is impossible to avoid because it's quite windy. I've been waiting for a really still day to do this. But we never get really still days here. So I'm going to tidy up as I go, keep moving the tarp around, you see the wind, it's kicked up again already. But we'll do the best we can. So I'll cut all the way around, just about to pop the lid off. I'm expecting there to be a lot of sludge in the bottom. 
Oh, it's going to get it all out through the bow. Ah, actually, that's not as bad as I'd expected. And you can see now it's like tops off. It just, I mean, that's a massive grow bed. It's uh, a nice little aquaponics tank, like a grow bed. You know, it, it's a great, great resource. We're going to use it as a goose tank. Um, you know, the geese, it's, uh, it's breeding season. They haven't got great water, really. Geese need water to successfully mate. And it's just a welfare issue. The geese, you know, the waterfowl, they need water. A lot of people keep them without water. No, they're going to have water. This is something that we can use. And you can see the tank outlet at the other end here. So we can stick a valve on that. Once it starts getting a bit funky, we can just straight away open the valve, dump all the water out of it, and away we go. Now, the next stage for this is, because there's still some weight in it, you know, it's a decent sized bit of plastic is I'm going to take, actually it's not bad, I'm going to tidy up these burrs a little bit and just make sure that's really nice and then uh, we're going to give the inside a clean. So I'm going to get all of this horrible gunky oil absorbed into wood chip so then I can burn the wood chip and it's a safe disposal uh, and then we're going to come out with a uh, certain detergent, um, uh, you know, like um, washing up liquid, you know. Uh, um, crockery detergent you know so uh, we'll give that a good scrub it'll take all the oil off it and then we'll give it a fill with water and we'll see if any film rises to the surface but these plastics I mean they're amazing I can feel already there's no oily residue the only stuff is down the bottom here where I've been sloshing the tank around it doesn't hang on to oil it's an amazing plastic that's why it's such a tragedy with this stuff just going straight to landfill so that's going to be used the top of course you can see that's very cool I've got other uses for this I'm, uh, I'm really pleased with it because I see a lot of these people turning these things into um, animal housing. It's really good for that. You know, it's a nice sealed tank. It's really useful. But um, there's a couple of other uses. I don't want to go too far into that. So that's the other use for that. So, yeah, first job is to tidy this up and get that soaked in. And then uh, we'll come up and do a bit more filming as we're giving it a good scrub just to show how well it cleans up. And then I'm gonna add plenty of dish detergent. It's a really good degreasing agent. You know, it's easy to undervalue this stuff because it's a fairly standard household chemical that's widely used, but it's amazing for cleaning, especially anything greasy. So we got it on good and strong. And then I'm gonna give it all a good scrub down. And I go up the sides. Well, you can see already how that's cleaning up and this has had probably decades of heating oil in it and it cleans up beautifully well, the good thing is of course that oil has got an odour to it so I can have a pretty good gauge when I'm done as to whether there's any residue left in it I mean, if in doubt, you know, if this was really full of just disgusting oil uh, and it was really encrusted, another option would be just to fill it with wood chips, you know, mounded and just leave it somewhere for a year or so, let the wood chips do their thing. Because once the, the fungal colonies have come in and they've broken down the wood chips, what those fungal colonies are doing is they're breaking down fairly complex um, carbon molecules into the component parts and that's exactly what oil is of course it's just very old and refined so that's another way of dealing with oil spills is through using wood chips but uh, this is pretty clean you can see how well it's cleaning up all right i'm going to finish getting this a scrub and then we'll show what it's like afterwards so that's the first scrub and I've given it a sluice out and that looks pretty good to be honest. I was going to give it a second go but I'm not sure it needs it. Maybe, maybe I'll give it a second scrub over but I mean you can see just how clean it's coming up. So I think, I think I give it one more scrub and I think we'll fill it with water and see what it looks like but I'm really pleased with that. I mean you can see just how clean it's come up. That's very, very, very nice. So yeah. That's coming together nicely. All right, next stage. All 
And I think we're done. Let's give it a quick rinse out. And I think, no, I'm not actually. I'm going to leave the soap in it. I'm going to fill it with water and uh, we leave it overnight just so that it gets to a long soap in soapy water just because we might as well. There's no advantage to emptying out tonight, really. So I'll fill it and then we'll leave it and then uh, we'll go on to the next stage of it tomorrow. But it's pretty well there. There's not much left to do at this point. So I let it soak overnight and then I emptied the water out, gave it a couple of rinses the next day. And uh, this is what we're left with. It is spotlessly clean. I'd be happy to bathe in this. It's, you know, there's no odor to it at all. It's really nice. Uh, I'm happy for my animals to use it. You know, it's that clean. And I, you know, I don't take their safety at all lax. You know, it's, it's something I take seriously. So at this point, that is a fully functioning goose pond. It's really strong plastic. I mean, incredibly tough. It'll do for years. It was completely free. It was destined for landfill. So it's an ecological win. It's a financial win and it'll last for years. It's light enough that I can move it around myself. You know, when it's empty, there's some pretty significant weight in it when it's full. But I'm going to swap out the valve on the top here with a wider bore valve so it's easy to dump the water out of. And I could even, if I wanted to, put a, an auto top up from the hose so I could just dump the water out, switch the hose on and it'll auto fill and I won't have to go back to it. Probably won't do that yet, I might at a later stage. But uh, yeah, I'm really pleased with that considering it was free and I've still got the other half of the tank to be using for another project. But uh, all that remains really is to go and introduce you to the geese. Good, nah. Good boy, Robert. So brave. Straight in. In the splash zone. 